IMPD says the lack of affordable housing in Marion County is playing a major role in homelessness. Sleeping in a tent, on the sidewalk, or anywhere they can lay their head has become a reality for hundreds of Hoosiers. Metro Police is cracking down on crime in Broad Ripple Village. This comes after a chaotic scene erupted early this morning outside a Broad Ripple hookah bar. The conditions this week are nothing to take lightly. This is dangerous. In fact, Indiana's Environmental Agency is warning that high ozone levels expected statewide tomorrow could make it hard for some people to breathe. You know why we're here? Yes. So that's why I didn't believe, okay? Okay, is there any comment that you can give us? No. Just look at these waves crashing underneath this beach house. This is what Mayor Jeff Collier is worried about. Would you like to say sorry to the victim? Is that a yes? He eventually apologized. You nodded your head yes that you were sorry to the victims. Would you like to say sorry to them physically? I'm sorry. Greg, I have documents right here showing DHR told staff members that it would take over control of the investigation. Instead, LeBron's former caretaker says the department dropped the ball. Alan, the sky will be glowing whether it's lightning or fireworks. Hello. We went to the front office looking for answers. Are you the manager? As the president was leaving, we asked him, What is your response to this today, this situation? My response is that we'll do everything we can to make the system better. However, my hands are tied as far as taking immediate action. You were talking about policies, changing them. That's what the students want. What are you guys going to do? Are you going to do that? Kim, police say Senator Vivian Figure's home was shot into around 25 times. They're trying to figure out the motive and when this happened. NBC 15's Rachel Wilkerson broke the story. And Rachel, now the state is getting involved. That's right, Greg. This has raised serious concerns. The Department of Human Resources is now investigating this case. That's along with the district attorney's office and Pritchard Police. IMPD says the lack of affordable housing in Marion County is playing a major role in homelessness. Sleeping in a tent on the sidewalk or anywhere they can lay their head has become a reality for hundreds of Hoosiers. Tucked off the interstate through the tall grass and trees, you'll find this camp. It's home for at least 10 people, including Kenneth Peevler. We don't want to be around uh, residents to, to make them nervous or bother anybody. It's hard to get a, a place to live nowadays. Making sure these folks are safe. What's up, bud? How are you doing? And keeping it clean is IMPD's homeless unit. We're a little bit non-traditional with our with our law enforcement, uh, but we come in and, and we just uh, we just try to provide the services that they need. And so it, it might be medical issues, it might be mental health issues, it might be trash pickup. We tagged along with Officer Pat McPherson and Tom Tyson as they did their weekly checks on different homeless camps. You can see the camp is it's clean. It's just they need some help uh, getting rid of the trash that they've collected. These officers develop relationships. Yeah, yeah that's what we're going to work on, brother. And see firsthand the challenges homeless Hoosiers are facing. I think a lack of quality housing with wraparound services is probably the number one issue for us. We have a 1,500 plus person waiting list and, you know, we're policemen. I, I can't help somebody get a house, especially when there just aren't any. Officer Phil Smiley says the department partners with nonprofit organization The Poor House to lend a hand to those needing housing, mental health treatment, and health care. Right now, The Poor House has 1,500 homeless on a housing wait list. But in some cases, those waiting for help are waiting for years. Man, the waiting list is just like, I'm like, when is this going to happen? You know, how much do we have to go through? Clifford Massey has been on the streets for a year and a half. Man, it's just rough on us out here. He's just one of hundreds struggling to survive as they wait for the phone call saying it's finally their turn for housing assistance. Anything that you guys can do, please do it because it's, it's ridiculous what's going on. I appreciate it, man. Right, right, right. Yep, thank you. IMPD says despite the work of its homeless unit, the city is still in a crisis. It's the way it is, you know. In 2016, the Indianapolis City County Council passed the Homeless Bill of Rights, protecting their access to medical care and public areas. 
if you're on city property, if you're in a, a right of way, that I am not denying your ability to use that area, uh, then they're allowed to be there. And I can't, as a police officer, force them to move from that spot unless I can permanently house them uh, immediately. And that's just not going to happen. That's not, there is no housing. Redevelopments across the city has forced some camps to be shut down and is limiting where the homeless can go, according to IMPD. Most of the people living in these camps say all they have is each other, but this lifestyle isn't easy. Every year, hundreds die from conditions out here. This memorial wall shows you just how much people care for those they've lost. This compassion from the homeless and IMPD is why the department says Marion County is seeing an uptick in homeless coming from nearby states and counties. People definitely felt like DHR failed him. This former staff member at Augusta Evans Special Education School wants to remain anonymous because of this investigation. Our source was heavily involved with little eight-year-old LeBron Rankin and has a lot to say about him. What started out as this happy boy who was always laughing quickly faded and LeBron, the former staffer, says was slipping away. It just got worse each week. He was lethargic. He was um, losing weight rapidly. He had visible signs of neglect. It just wasn't good. Concerned staff members, our contact says, had reached out to LeBron's mother with concerns in the past. And nothing was really resolved, so it was time to report it to DHR. And that's what LeBron's caretakers did. Staff members filed these two complaints with the Alabama Department of Human Resources. The first, on February 5th, 2018, states LeBron appeared to be losing weight and had reoccurring ringworm. The next day, February 6th, DHR sent this letter back to the school, acknowledging it would begin an assessment of LeBron, including an interview with him at the school as part of its, quote, thorough investigation to protect him. It's in this same letter school officials are told not to contact the parents of LeBron Rankin or any other person regarding this information. This former staff member tells us DHR failed LeBron and believes DHR should be held accountable. We weren't hearing back from DHR or being interviewed. It was passed on to them, so it was their responsibility. Three weeks later, staff members filed a second complaint stating LeBron was thinner since the last DHR complaint and noted very poor hygiene. He had small roaches on his wheelchair and also crawling out of his clothes. Kim LeBron's family told police they interacted with him the morning of his death. Our review of police files indicate that timeline doesn't add up. April 6, 2018, 1248 p.m. Dispatchers receive a 911 call from this apartment at the Sandpiper townhomes on Knollwood. The caller says eight-year-old LeBron Rankin is lying on his mattress, not breathing and unresponsive. A second 911 call comes in at 1252. <coughs> Seven minutes after the first call, Mobile Fire and Rescue and NPD arrive on scene, finding LeBron's sister attempting CPR. That was unsuccessful at some point. Uh, paramedics arrived on the scene and were able to make a determination that, you know, that they needed to stop doing the CPR. The scene was secured. And of course, you know, that was a, a residence uh, uh, with other children present. Five children home alone during spring break, according to police. The oldest, age 17. LeBron, who suffered from cerebral palsy, couldn't walk or easily communicate, according to his family. He relied on others to feed him through a tube. Police questioned three of LeBron's siblings who were home with him, as well as LeBron's mother and his mother's live-in boyfriend when they arrived from work. LeBron's 17-year-old sister told police she fed him around 9 that morning, but LeBron, quote, didn't move. His 12-year-old brother told officers he woke up around 10 to feed LeBron. LeBron's mother, Zedra Rankin, told Mobile Police she checked on LeBron around 10 that morning and fed him around 11 before going to work around noon. When paramedics arrived at 12.55, 
they estimated LeBron died at least four hours earlier. That would be sometime before 9 a.m. One of the detectives reported LeBron's body seemed to be in the late stages of rigor mortis, a stiffening of the body after the death. Mobile Police Chief Lawrence Batiste says officers noticed possible signs of neglect when they began their investigation. They saw a very frail, what looked to be somewhat emaciated uh, young man, and so just based off those things there, they just felt like that they needed to make sure they secured and treated as if though it was a, a homicide scene. Investigators describe a stomach-turning scene riding LeBron's bedroom smelled strongly of urine. There were formula containers and feeding tube syringes all over the floor of the bedroom, according to investigators. The police report says the floor was covered with apparently unwashed clothes and food boxes. On LeBron's bed, police found a soiled diaper. There appeared to be some level of, uh, of neglect uh, inside the home. Officers found cases of unopened formula for LeBron inside the apartment. The eight-year-old boy who had no way to reach that food weighed just 23 pounds when he died. The hospital alerted the district attorney's office about LeBron's condition. Tomorrow at 5, I'll let you know what DA Ashley Rich has to say as we continue our investigation into the death of LeBron Rankin. Kim? NBC 15's Rachel Wilkerson's investigation into LeBron's death uncover the warning signs from teachers, LeBron's medical records, and the timeline that didn't add up the morning of LeBron's death. Rachel, this arrest is proving some relief to staff members at LeBron's former school. It is, Greg and Kim. LeBron's mother, if convicted, is now facing up to life in prison.